right guys, welcome to another edition of Marty's Hot Rod Garage. So this morning we're going to Michigan. Apparently we bought some kind of Dodge truck, a 54 or 55, and we're gonna we're meet some guys here. We're gonna load the XJ up and uh, head up there. We got an equipment trailer to try to get this thing loaded up. Hopefully the wheels are gonna roll on it. We're gonna winch it up on the trailer and uh, uh, who knows what we're getting into, but it'll be a great adventure. Michigan. Best case scenario, right there. Here we are. We got this big behemoth home, and uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do with this thing. It's a much bigger truck than I thought it was when we got it. But uh, I'm hoping some of you truck guys will see this thing and tell me what it is. The designation on this thing it says C1 T. A8, but obviously it's a uh, it's a big old truck. Look at that stack of springs on there. And it looks like Rocky Raccoon and his buddies had Crap Fest uh, 2022 there. We're getting ready to start cleaning this thing up. It's a mess inside here. There's where the battery goes. So we got our work cut out for us on this. And guys, on this one, we're kind of looking for uh, for suggestions. I mean, we don't have any clue what we're going to do with this thing. So leave comments. I mean, what would you like to see us do with this thing? A uh, rat rod or make a car hauler out of it? I mean, a lot of possibilities. 
This thing's got a uh, 331, I believe it to be a 331 Hemi in it. So, that's kind of cool. Our first step on this thing will be uh, just see if we can get it running. I'm going to take the plugs out. We'll put some tranny fluid down in the cylinders and see if we can get it freed up. And if we can get it started and moving around on its own power, that'll be a, a big plus. But like I say, this is a Dodge job rated T. And like I say, it was a C1 T A8 was the designation. And I can't even find so much as a picture on the internet of this thing. So I don't know that much about it. But we'll dig into it, see what we got. All right, this thing might be a little rough. Started cleaning it out. Guys, we're finding all kind of hidden treasure here. Look at this, this is something neat. I've never seen one of these before. I thought somebody left their lunch pail here, but this is some kind of it's some kind of service kit. Look at this. Here's a spare headlight. This is a headlight, and over here, this foam in here. These are bulbs, spare bulbs on the outside, and then these are fuses. So it looks like there's some sort of uh, factory service kit. But like I say, it looks like a... Uh, that looks like somebody's lunch pail. That's kind of neat. Yeah, we're literally shoveling stuff out of here with a shovel. The adventure continues. All right, we're making some headway here. Got one side. There's a pile of stuff there. We're getting ready to take out. Here's our treasures. There's those wheel buds we were missing. Here's some really cool stuff. There you know what new pop cans look like. How about this one here? A variety club. No pull tabs on that. Looks like a generator. gang here we are we got this thing cleaned up a little bit got it turned around you can kind of see on the door there what the thing used to say it used to say Midwest haulers operated for Midwest haulers out of Toledo Ohio so we cleaned it up a little bit got some stuff out of here so you can kind of see you can see our gauges and stuff in there now. Everything cleaned up fairly well. There was a top for the battery tray. I got the seat out of it. I'll take it to have it recovered. But the glass and stuff, not bad. That wing glass is broke out. That's just flat. That'll be easy. The, uh, windshield cracked i gotta tell you i'm confused everything i'm finding on this thing and 55 this thing should have a wrap around windshield and it does not it's kind of looking like this is a 54 but the title says 55 so i don't know if it was late year or what it is 
There you can see originally this thing was red and black. Body red with black fenders, black running boards. So the body's pretty good on it. I had some rust here and I thought, oh boy, the floor's rusted. But it's not really the floor, it's this crossover pan here, which the floor is just solid. So it'll be easy enough, I'll just make a panel make a panel there for that all right we're ready to we're gonna start on the motor today see if we can get her freed up we'll see how that goes all right probably the first thing we want to do let's see if we got any oil in this motor Boy, there's a good sign. It's got oil in it. It don't look like there's any water in it. Guys on these Hemis, I don't know if you can see, I took these screws out. Hemi, hemispherical heads means the spark plugs go right down in the center. Here's our wires. Should be. This is, that one's eight up. If we could find one that's still connected, and that was not connected. That is number one right there. That is number one. Let me see if I can mark that on there. Definitely number one plug right there. So that'll give us an idea when we go to put this back together. Here we are back again. Uh, I've enlisted some help from, uh, I'm a Hemi guy, but the later Hemis, when I'm saying later, I'm saying 60s, like 64, you know, that year. I gotta be honest, the early stuff like this, I'm a little bit uh, out of my league. So I believe this is a 331. Uh, we've got the valve covers off of it now. We took the plugs out of it. I've got it soaking, I've got some, uh, I've got a concoction of stuff down in there trying to get the motor to free up. But uh, I have a, a buddy, his name is uh, Vic Millis. He's known, people know him as, as Hemi Vic. And he's probably the foremost authority that I know on this early Hemi stuff. So Vic's supposed to be here in a little bit and I'm gonna see what, what he can tell me about this thing. Well, it looks like here comes Vic now. 
And of course, what would you expect someone named Hemi Vic to be driving? Hello, Marty. Hello, Victor. How are you today? I got an old truck I need you to look at. That looks like a good one. All right, let's dig in. All Before right. we get started on the truck, Vic, why, why don't you tell me a little bit about this car? Maybe show us the motor and stuff in it. Can you sure. do that? Sure. Sure. Um, this car was given to me, and it was in really, really rough condition. And I had just done a total restoration on a red 56, and I wasn't a, about to go on do a total restoration on this one because the car was so rough and knowing that there's only one of them left in the Henry Ford Museum I decided to do a tribute car to that car and to Frank Rebel Mundy which I'd met about 45 years ago and this is kind of one I ended up with um, by parting out a, a New Yorker body and putting the panels back in this I needed and then my uh, my friend Charlie, being a sign painter, he uh, brushed the letters on it, and I got a pretty good authentic look and a, and a nice tribute with this car. And the engine I wanted to make sure was a 56 354 standard bore, so I happened on to a Windsor block, bored it to a uh, 354, so it's for sure a standard bore, and if I ever get involved in any nostalgia racing, nobody could complain that my engine is stroked or bored. So it's really as close back to original as you could make it. Yes. Uh, one thing I'm working on still is I have the stuff to do the standard shift to three in the tree. I have it all. I just have to find time to do it. Um, to make it really authentic. What will be with the light right there on the firewall? That light was for when they come off the beach, they came up on the asphalt on A1A and they were tearing up right front tires. So they removed the clock, made a hole in the firewall and inner fender, and he'd flick that light on and look at that tire occasionally. Isn't that something? Yep. But I've put over 10,000 miles on this car since I put it together and I just had a ball with it. Well, it is a good looking ride. A great tribute. Thank you. 300B. A lot of the Chrysler 300 purists will probably be upset because this was a torque flight car and an air conditioned car. But like I said, it was in such rough shape and it had been just parted down and forgotten for so many years. Uh, I feel I did it justice. Let's dig into this old truck, see what you can tell us. Sounds good. All right, guys, we've been crawling around underneath this thing. Vic's been under it. Vic, what can you tell by what we've seen so far? Well, uh, the first thing I was looking for was an extended bell housing. That would tell me it was uh, like 53 and back, but it isn't. It's definitely a 54 or 55 because it has a regular bell housing. So now will a 727 transmission bolt up to this motor? A 727A will with an adapter from Hotheads. Okay. So that'd make it a cool motor for a street rod. Absolutely. Okay. And I also noticed when I was under there, it has the, what I call the 400 horse exhaust manifolds with the four bolt flange. So. So those are a little bit different. Now do they put those on performance motors or trucks? Well, that 56 sitting there, if it came with a 355 horse, would have those. Um, 
and they were, as far as I know, mostly truck applications or the performance applications on the 300s. Okay. So we know what year it is. We know more than likely it's the original motor in the truck. I'd have to say it is. Okay. And it's a 331. Are we correct on that? To the nearest I can figure, it's a 331. Now you said, I mean, we checked the block for the stamping. It doesn't have one, but you said that was pretty common on trucks. Yes, the, the truck engines and like the, the stationary engines, things like that, most of the time didn't have any numbers, that area behind the water pump we were looking. Yes, yes. Um, and there sometimes is a plate riveted to the block, which I can't get to on this one. I can't get in there to save. But I suspect there's a plate on this engine someplace. Um, in that area there behind the Federal Well where I can't get to it. Okay. All right. Well, keep watching, guys. Like I say, we got uh, we pull that inspection plate off the bottom of the motor where we can get the flywheel. We'll take some pry bars and see if we can't get this thing uh, freed up. Stay watching. We'll see what happens. Ready. Ready. All right, guys. Here, you know, a lot of guys they get confused on the hemis. The hemi means hemispherical head. So on the hemis, the valve covers. The spark plugs go down in the center of the of the head. So you have these tubes that go in for your spark plugs. Now, so when all the plugs go in, then on the truck they have this cover that goes over, covers all your wires up, and you got a nice neat looking job. But Vic, in the trunk of his car when he came out, Vic, what were you telling me about these and the there's no there's no lettering or no writing on these at all. What I found in interesting on this is it doesn't say industrial, it doesn't say marine, or it doesn't say Chrysler Firepower. This is actually the first set of these I've seen that has no lettering. And I've seen quite a, quite a few, and I'll be the first to admit that I don't know at all. But I found those unusual because there's usually an embossed name on them. No price for industrial. Pick one of those up. I don't want to get them dirty. Go ahead, pick it up. Get them dirty. There you can see like here, Chrysler Firepower. You can see on that one. Or industrial. And I don't have a set of marine ones at the time, but it would also say Chrysler Marine. Um, so it is somewhat interesting that these have no marking on them whatsoever. I find that very interesting. So just another little tidbit there we thought you might find interesting.